Well, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer are the reigning world and Olympic champions. They are getting set for the world championships coming up in about 10 days time in London, Ontario. But here's a look at their last competition before Worlds. It happened about three weeks ago in Osaka, Japan, the Four Continents competition. And this has uh, some Canadian figure skating fans a little bit concerned because midway through their free dance, uh, Tessa and Scott had to stop. Tessa suffered a leg cramp and uh, they were able to resume the program and did manage to finish in second place. But uh, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer now join us by phone from London, Ontario. And Tessa, I'll start with you. Uh, how is the leg feeling and how has that affected your preparation for Worlds? Well, I'm feeling much better now. You know, it's uh, never something you expect to happen in a competition, but uh, I experienced some swelling in my calf, and I think really it was just a result of us pushing ourselves a little bit too hard in training. Uh, you know, we really have been working to increase our speed and power and, uh, you know, really intensified our, our training practices. So that took its toll, and, you know, I'm just happy we were able to get back and, and finish the program strongly. We, uh, you know, we're happy with the elements that we put out there, and, you know, if anything it was a good chance for us to step back and analyze our plan heading into the world championships and sort of get back to the fundamentals that we know work for us. I think a lot of people were a little bit concerned because a year and a half ago or so you you had uh, surgery on your leg because of compartmental syndrome and and there was concern some concern that there might be a connection or correlation between that and uh, this incident in Osaka. Was that the case? Well, no, I don't think it was. You know, I think we were, like I said, just really trying to push ourselves and uh, just so happened to um, come out in, in the form of a calf cramp. You know, maybe that's uh, my Achilles heel, I suppose. But, uh, you know, it's something we can manage for the last couple of years. Um, you know, I've been healthy, feeling great and able to train at 100%. And, and that hasn't changed. Uh, you know, I think with our great team of medical advisors around us and physiotherapists and sports scientists, uh, you know, we have... We have the knowledge to um, to train properly and effectively, and uh, we've been doing a lot of power aerobic intervals uh, since, and I think that will give us a great confidence boost heading into the World Championships. And Scott, you, you've been talking the last year and a half now about what a thrill it will be to compete uh, pretty much at home in London, Ontario, mm -hmm. in front of the hometown fans. Uh, how are you feeling mentally right now with, with this competition about uh, 10 days away? It's a, it's a very exciting time of the season for Tess and I. You know, we have had a great year and um, coming off of a very successful season last year. It's, it's exciting to have so much momentum going into uh, world championships. And, um, you know, you know we, were, we got a lot of support and concern from the Canadian fans uh, after Japan. But the, the great thing about, uh, you know, our situation is we kind of feel like veterans now. So as Tessa said, we know what works. So we just kind of went back and, and relied and in our training and what we know works and we're building a, a great head of steam here heading into World of Mind, which should be a pretty unique event for the two of us in our careers. Well enjoy the experience and we're looking forward to watching you in London a uh, week and a half from now. Thanks for Thank this. You. Thanks, Brenda. And a reminder that we will have a Tessa and Scott short dance Thursday, March the 14th. Our extensive coverage begins on Tuesday, March the 11th. It's going to be exciting. The 2013 World Figure Skating Championships from London, Ontario. I hope you can join us for that. Well, more skating to come from the World Junior Championships from Milan, Italy. Our coverage of the World Junior Figure Skating Championships continues now on CBC Sports Weekend. And Tracy, we turn our attention now to ice dance. And, you know, Canada has really seen a remarkable reversal of fortunes in ice dance during the past eight years. And it all started with a little team by the name of Virtua Moyer back in 2005. Well, no question. And uh, they're not only leading Canadian dance, they're leading the world of ice dance. And it all started for them back at the World Junior Championships. Championships, Brenda, when they uh, in 2005, when they won the silver, 2006, winning the gold medal, and then you see Caitlin Weaver, Andrew Poget with the bronze, uh, Cronin Poirier with silver, and Paul and Islam with silver as well. And let's take a little trip down memory lane, go back to 2005, and take a look at uh, the World Junior Champions back then, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer. Looking a little younger. A little younger. And I remember when I first saw them 
uh, competing. It was at the World Juniors. I think it was in Kitchener. And I actually had to move closer to the boards because they were so short. <laughs> Sometimes you would lose them, but... Let's watch their elegance, even back then as youngsters, it was apparent. Well, it's going to be interesting because one of the teams everyone uh, wants to point to to win this title is Alexandra Stepanova and Ivan Buchan. Uh, Ivan, his father, is the great Andre Buchan, who you competed yeah, against. Yeah, uh, Best Mianova and Buchan, and of course, they're celebrating their Olympic gold medal win 25 years ago last weekend. And now Andre's son, Ivan, competing here with his partner, Alexandra. They are the favorites. Last year, they were silver medalists here at the Junior Grand Prix Final. They won the gold. No question, they are the team to beat. Let's go inside now the Agora Ice Stadium, uh, the site of this year's Junior World Junior Ice Championships. Ice. And Milan had only one ice rink uh, just a, a little while ago before this one was built. Uh, this city, beautiful backdrop for this week's competition. Now, the Russians, as you see, sit first after the short with a three-point lead over Pak Badakis and Cicerone of France. The American team of Aldridge and Eaton, well, they were whopping eight points back of first. And the Canadian team of Mackenzie Bent and Garrett McKean are in fourth place. Madeline Edwards and Xiao Kai Peng are sitting sixth. And that's where we're going to start now with Madeline Edwards and Xiao Kai Peng, the reigning Canadian junior champions. See lots of Canadian fans here making the trip to Milan. And uh, Madeline is 16. And Tracy, from your hometown of Port Moody, British Columbia. And Pang is 17 from Burdamy. British Columbia. Yeah, it's so wonderful to hear from other skaters coming from Port Moody. When I grew up in Port Moody, it was a town of about 10,000. And my mom and dad helped start the Inlet Figure Skating Club, which I represented. And now these two have just had such a wonderful career so far. And they're so young. And their music comes from the artist's soundtrack. And they will open with their side-by-side -side twizzles. That's a required element in the free dance. Along with a number of lifts, two step sequences, and a dance spin. And boy, that was beautifully done. Look at how they are. Remember, we saw the elegance of Virtue and Moyer a few years back at the beginning. Well, we're seeing that of these two, two elegant lines. Look at the speed. Such a pleasure to watch these two. Oh, beautiful backs, and look at how they're using their knees up and down in the skating knee allows them to get their flow and lots of speed across the ice, but also a softness and ease. Tracy, this team has been competing together now for five years and are coached by former Canadian skaters Zarin Lowe and Megan Wing. What a terrific job they've done with these two. to recover because your brain's thinking about the mistake. We gotta move forward now, guys. But look at them. You you wouldn't know by the expression <laughs> on their face what had just happened. 
it out but hold back enough to be in total control. That is heartbreaking. Well, a, a tough outing there for the Canadian junior champions, oh, Madeline boy. Edwards and Sho Kai Pang. I'll bet you that's something they've never even done in practice, and they're just wondering what happened. Oh, well, the scores here and, for the Canadians. And the scores are just not going to make them feel any better. Costly mistakes. Aaron will know how to help them out of this. You know, as disappointed as they are, I can't help but sit here and feel so excited about this team, about their future, their potential. I think they're lovely. Watch for them in the future, and I can't wait to see them at the senior level. Very, very uh, exciting things to come, as disappointing as it is for them right now. Well, as we can see by the flags, French skaters are next. Gabrielle Papadakis and Guillaume Ciceron who sat in Gabriela second place Papadakis after the short dance. But Gabriella, she twisted her right ankle, Tracy, in an off-ice warm-up just a little while earlier. And she went back to the hotel where the French medical staff attended to her. And let's see now how that injury may or may not affect their, their free dance. They will skate to music by Pink Floyd. Her injury bothered her so much that she was not able to practice. She did it, as you said, on an off-ice warm-up, was supposed to have a 45-minute practice. He practiced on his own while she sought medical attention. Ah, we remember this from a few years back, Virtue and Moyer. there, a bit of a mistake. The new system put requirements in the ice dance event and, and young skaters have to learn them at a young age. So by the time they get to the senior level, you just see their technical ability is uh, really tremendous because of the years of being forced to do the technical difficulty. struggling here. Oh, That's yeah. a couple of mistakes now. Looks just a little bit, a little bit rough around the edges. This is their fourth uh, world championship, junior world championship that is, and they finished fifth at the event last year. Can you feel me? They have a very free style. Hey, you don't help it's them open, they get down in their knees well, good extension. I find that it is a little bit sloppy in places, not a, all of the don't definition there all the time. Without a fight. But again, very impressed. 
at the technical ability of this dance team. Out there on your own, sitting naked by the phone. To the junior level, I, I just, yes. uh, boy. I mean, physically, oh. and they're looking, oh, and they're stopping. And obviously, that, that ankle is really starting to bother. Or you can see it throughout the performance that she was certainly struggling with it. Now, Tracy, what happens next to I guess the well, question is whether she'll have to. They'll they'll go to the referees. They have to they have to talk to the referee. And she's shaking her head and obviously in distress. At this point, the referee can talk to them about whether they will continue or not. They'll have three minutes if they decide to. It looks to me like they might not. And it didn't look like it was anything particular that, that caused her to stop, but uh, probably uh, it's for a few minutes into yeah. the program and, and just probably this throbbing, bothering her. This is this is interesting. We saw this just uh, you talked about it in the interview earlier with Virtua Moyer. Oh, and they are they're going to pick it up. And this is the third time we've seen this this year in ice dance where somebody has stopped and been able to pick it up. It is within the rules. Why? I'm not sure. Lots of speed now into their circular step sequence. And she's back on that sore ankle and seeming to have no trouble with it at this point. And while there is no specific deduction for stopping and, and restarting, uh, it would have an impact, one would think, on the judges and their overall impression of this performance. You know, one would think, but if there's not a mandatory deduction, then they are supposed to shut the brain off when the program starts and turn it back on and judge accordingly. It is not supposed to. I mean, it, obviously, for me, any interruption affects it. Well, the French team of Papadakis and Cizeron managed to finish uh, their free dance at the World Juniors. Uh, not quite the performance they had hoped for with that interruption because of injury. First of all, looking at this team, I mean, imagine your morning of your competition, you're in second place, she did suffer that injury. And so, I mean, what they've had to overcome in this free dance, but you know, my brain's thinking about the rule that allows you to stop and take a little breather. And I'm not, this is not directed at these Gabriela two in Papadakis, any way. I know they have an injury, Cizeron. but I believe it's a sport. And, you know, across the board, whoever you are, when you look at it, you know, if you have to stop, it's a DNF, did not finish. It, what concerns me is that we're going to see more and more of it. We've seen it three times this year, the mistake. And what happens if this happens at the Olympic Games? How it'll be a travesty in a, you know, a sport among sports at the Olympic Games. I believe that's going to need to be addressed. Now, watching this team, you can see their nice, well-matched body lines. They're both very fluid skaters. You see floating through the lifts here. Doesn't hold the positions and, and doesn't really hold, she, they don't really hold the landings coming out of the jumps and, but you know, junior level. And I, I'm watching these guys thinking that they're senior because of the maturity, but this is the junior level. That's more than enough to, to move this team into first place. And uh, Tracy, not too, too far off, as you see there, their season best score. But remember the best teams are still left to come here at the World Junior in Milan and they are currently in first place and we are going to have more to come from Milan Italy and can, including the Canadian team of Mackenzie Benn and Garrett McQueen we'll be back in just a moment in pista, next skate here in, in Milan are the Americans, Alexander Aldridge and Daniel Eaton, who sat third after the Alexander short dance, and Daniel they are the reigning Eaton. world junior bronze medalists. They trained in Detroit with Canada's Caitlin Weaver and Andrew Poche, and the world bronze medalists, Natalie Peschla and Fabian Borzat. And uh, 
Daniel has Canadian roots. His grandmother married in Eaton, and they were railroad loggers who helped build the railroad from North Bay to James Bay. Grew up in Detroit. Need I say? Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, I like their flow. Look at the speed, very fluid. I also like their, their precision, taking the time to Hit the details. They sat in third place after the short dance. A circular step. Let's see how closely they skate together, working and weaving within each other's arms. two up the podium today in Milan. Two-time U.S. Yeah, national yeah, champions, yeah. and uh, that was really fun to watch, Brendan. It was a sort of program. It was easy to like. You could sit back, you could appreciate all they were doing, and also their interpretation of the music just helped you to become involved and just help the overall enjoyment. Watch these twizzles. I thought, oh, hang on, hang on. You could see they were almost reckless there. 
but they were able to recenter and refocus, and that's tough to do because often if you're a little bit nervous and you get a little bit off in a twizzle, it's gone. So they were able to find the focus and just push those twizzles through. One of the rotational lifts at the end of the program, their coaches alongside and Angelika Krilova, a world ice dance champion from Russia. They needed a score of 86 to move into the lead. Remember, they did trail the French team, the current leaders, by five points after the short program. Uh, just a little shy of their personal best. That will leave them for the moment in second place. So the French still in first place. You see the Canadian fans on hand to encourage our next team. Mackenzie Bent, Garrett McKean. And this is the very first trip to Junior Worlds for Mackenzie Bent and Garrett McKean. Now they were second overall, the Canadians, to the team that we saw a little bit earlier, Edwards and Pang. And Mackenzie and Garrett have been skating together since they were about seven, eight years old, much like Virtue and Warrior. <laughs> talking about just how Tess and Scott have uh, really been an inspiration for them and how they've created uh, a new standard for the sport and, and given them something to work toward. No question for all of the skaters, you understand what's possible. And then when you get it, Tess and Scott show you, shows you what more <laughs> yeah. is possible. I like the way these two are interpreting their music gone from the, the heavier music at the beginning and now a softness as it's as it's slower. Canadian silver medalist here in Milan. 
It really was a strong skate. I loved their short dance skating to a blues. It was beautifully interpreted. I would have liked to have seen a little more syncopation in the tango, just uh, picking McKenzie out a little Bend, bit more rhythm in the dance, and that all of that comes with maturity and time. These to this team too, a very bright future, Brenda. Fun. So let's take a look. That was a little bit of a of a slip at the beginning of the program. And uh, I think it's going to be fun for these guys to really now work on their image and what is the look that they want to sort of take and make their own and experimenting with different styles. Uh, Coach Carol Lane there in the Kiss and Cry. Uris is at home. He'll be uh, training the other teams. And Uris was a uh, world junior champion back in uh, 1991. Shout out to him. So a couple points shy of a seasonal best score will put them in third place right now. But there are still two teams left to skate here in the ice dance competition at the world junior champion. Still ahead on Spista, Dalla Russia. We are nearing the conclusion of the ice stage, dance competition here Russia. at the World Junior Valeria Figure Tenkova, Skating Championships in Milan, Italy. Just a couple of teams to skate here. And it is the first trip uh, to this competition for Valeria Zenkova and Valery Sinitsyn of Russia. Uh, they are the reigning Russian junior champions. And they sat in fifth place after the short, but just one point back of third place. And they will skate to music from Cats. And they've recently had a coaching change. They're now with Alexander Julin. taking their time here as they get set for their music. together. I'm not so keen on their choreography. I feel the rhythm of the music, but I'm not getting it so much in their skating. Well, this team was talking about what it needed to work on in the future, and they said we have to become more free with our skating. He says, right now our, our skating is pretty junior. We, ha we have to move it up a, a notch or two and, and make it look more senior. I mean, you've got a lot to work with, with this team. And that's, I think, perhaps the reason for the coaching change now moving to Alexander Julen. That's actually what they need. They, they need, I think, choreography that challenges them. See how they're just skating here, looking at each other, holding hand in hand. That is the very most basic. And I think they're capable of a lot more. Again, hand in hand.
and struggling here in this footwork. It just doesn't feel like it's in sync with the music. Well, I guess in a nutshell, Brenda, I have to say I really like this dance team. I think you've got a lot to work with. I did not like that program at all. I just don't think it was a quality that they are capable of. It's just not a vehicle to show no, off uh, the no. best that they have. No. So Valerie, not a challenge. No, no. Uh, they are winner of uh, two Grand Prix events, though, over the past couple of seasons. They were fifth at the junior Grand Prix final. Remember, they're just one point back of third place. And you see their footwork sequence here, but you see their upper bodies are a little bit up and arched. The free legs are not really working. I feel like they're, they're sort of hitting out but not really working and reaching for the ice and that's you know that's the coaching change that's exactly what they need they they need somebody to give them the material that they can sink their teeth in and that's what Sasha Zulin will do for them uh, they needed a score of 87.45 to, to move into first place so they will now sit behind uh, Papadakis and Cicerone and the American team of Aldridge and Eaton in third place but a great team is left to come, and it is Thank our you. final team of the day, our final skaters, the current Grand Prix final champions, Alexandra Stepanova and Ivan Buchan. We said that uh, Buchan is the son of 88 Olympic ice dance <laughs> champion. Andre Buchan and Tracy, you and Rob McCall were bronze medalists at and good Calgary friends. Games. Yeah. Here's the uh, world. Natalia Bestimianova, Andre Buchan, and we competed with them for many years, toured with them, and wonderful people and terrific skaters and it's it's cool to watch andre's son here looks just like him maybe he's a little more handsome the young guy <laughs> <laughs> don't let andre yeah that's say what i was that. gonna say <laughs> as you see there their season's best uh, 88 points uh they need far less than that uh to win this junior world title and they will skate to a flamenco bolero by Gustavo Montesano. Gorgeously timed to the music, wonderful positions, and the detail to be applauded.
talked about the free legs of the other Russian dance team and watch theirs, the, the legs that are in the air. They have beautiful reach with the toe, nice unison and turnout. They feel right through to the blade. chance to see the stars of tomorrow today a great example of that right here well this is a team that no question will transition successfully into the senior ranks they have beautiful bodies their lines and match they, they have a of, uh, history you know, together so you can tell when they're skating they're very very sure about where they're going and how they're reacting watch this footwork sequence the free leg lines reaching it's really important when you push the skate from the ice and it leaves the ice that it continues to reach for it. That anchors the position and allows the body to sort of play, keeping a solid foundation. She's very flexible. Both of them equally fluid, equally athletic and talented skaters. Uh, the magic number for them will be just over 78 points. We'll give them the world title. Remember, they were the leaders after the short dance. Right now, Papadakis and Cicerone in first, but that score enough and a little more to give them the title here in Milan at the 2013 World Junior Figure Skating Championships. A wonderful performance by Alexandra Stepanova and Ivan Bukin of Russia. And isn't that a nice moment, sitting in the kiss and cry and watching the numbers come up, Junior Worlds first. So taking the silver medal will be Papadakis and Cicerone, Aldridge and Eaton in third place. Uh, the top Canadians, Mackenzie Bent and Garrett McKean, will finish fifth and in 12th place, uh, Madeline Edwards and Cho Kai Peng. Stepanova and Buchan, uh, Tracy, win by a whopping seven points. You know, how well do you think they'll be able to make that transition uh, from mm. the junior ranks into the senior world? Well, I think it's going to be very easy for them. I think they, they took the extra year. They were second last year at junior worlds and now first this year. They're ready to move on. They, they've got it. They've got the body lines. They're well matched and physically strong. And it's, uh, it's so interesting to, to watch the junior dancers and to see, I keep forgetting actually <laughs> that they are juniors there. They're tackling difficult stuff and just the level of ice dance. I mean, we look back to the Olympics 25 years ago and we see now the athleticism that has been brought into the sports with the new rule change and uh, some great stuff. Any disappointment from a Canadian perspective? I don't think so. I mean, there was a couple of falls there, which you hate to see, but what a bright future for these teams. And a reminder tomorrow that Tracy and I will be back with more uh, figure skating. It will be the men's and the women's competition for you. And the next week is going to be another busy, busy one. We're going to have World Cup uh, giant slalom event. Also, short track speed skating. It's the World Championships from Hungary and the World Freestyle Championships. So right now... Uh, to Hockey Night in Canada, a game in Winnipeg between Washington and the Jets. Now, let's join Elliot Friedman 